Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT. This is Curse of Strahd, and we're continuing doing some building of the Barovia village. Uh, now, I am in version 12, but everything we're doing works just as well in version 11. So there's nothing really that version 12 is giving us. But of course, there are a couple of things we, we do differently not necessarily better and it's certainly nothing that you can't do in version 11 with the right mods um, so we are using levels um, and the main thing that is different is regions um, and we're using regions to slightly adjust the light inside and make the interiors a bit darker than the outside uh, and also to stop the weather from raining inside now there is a previous video if you're on version 11 you're saying well hang on a minute how do I do that in version 11 there is a video um, about no weather indoors uh, when we looked at Curse of Strahd and we were doing the death house in version 11 how to do that so go find that it will be in the add-ons playlist okay so enough of that where are we so this is the blood of the vine tavern um, now you did see me build this in the previous one it's all completely ready to go uh, except for a couple of sound effects so I've got my fireplace in I've got all my lighting in and stuff like that um, and this is the one where I did with the lighting that as it gets dark, some of these lights come on automatically. So you can see it's getting darker and darker and darker as we get to night time. Boom, the lights come on. Not all of them, because these candles at the table will get lit as and when people just choose to go and sit at that table. You know, it just gives me that ability to turn those lights on, create atmosphere when I want to. Let's make it daylight again. Um, so that was all kind of done previously, but I have added in the NPCs into here, generated their new images and stuff and created them. So in my actors folder, I have my NPCs folder, Barovia Village, starting to build up who those NPCs are, which is great. Um, I also went on and built um, Buildraft's Mercantile. I did record building this um, and then totally messed up the recording so I haven't got it but it's it's a one story building it's really quite simple and straightforward the only thing that is a bit different is that um Buildra Bild Buildreth Buildreth Buildraths I've got an e in there um is a shop so this shop was created using item piles which we have looked at so again playlist add-ons find item piles and there's a couple of videos about different ways to do shops and I've settled on item piles for shops really easy to use so I created that um, with this item piles has been updated for version 12 as well as you can see because I'm using it um, and all the functions are there so again version 11 version 12 you can do all of these things anyway which is all good so I created that what I actually want to do in this video I'm going to create a new scene in my Bavaria village and this is going to be Mad Mary's Townhouse. Now, there's a strong possibility that players won't even go here, depending if you're doing the original Strad, uh, Curse of Strad module. Um, this is kind of, kind of driven here as one of the very first places when they come to the village. In the Strad Reloaded, it's actually not, um, and it's not remotely um, critical at all. So we've got a new scene. I want to select my background image. I want to make sure I'm popping my stuff in the correct folder for me because I'm packaging it as part of that. Uh, and I want Mad Mary's Townhouse ground floor. Um, I've already popped them into the correct folders. So they've already been through Ripper's Media Optimizer to get that correct for us. What I do want to do is I want to make sure that grid is nice and visible, perhaps not quite that much. So that you guys can see it easier on screen and here we go um, and then the first thing to do is to check the grid now these this is a doorway that's a 10 foot wide doorway that's not what we want that's far too large in fact i would hazard to say twice as big as it needs to be so if i change my grid size to 200 pixels boom there we go each door is five foot wide or at least equivalent so that players can move through so the grid now aligns quite nicely that's what I want next thing for me to do then is to hide that grid so the grid is still there so I updates to foundry <laughs> so, so some of the mods and things we like to keep an eye on those um, go away thank you thank you very much discord 
Um, so the next thing to do before I go get carried away building all of this level, this is a multi-story place. So on my left hand side, I'm going to select my levels uh, and I'm going to edit. Uh, so I'm going to add a new level and edit my level and make sure I call this the ground floor. Because what I don't want to do is put walls in. Thank you, Motomoto. Um, what I don't want to do is go and put all walls in and stuff and those walls end up being you know really really high um, must put in the heights so I'm, I'm up in the top right corner let's make that a bit bigger so you guys not that big Jesus excuse me one second while I um, ask discord to please stop doing that because otherwise this video is just going to be piled full of discord <laughs> it's a conversation ongoing um, and I need to define the height of it so it's going to start from the ground my phone started going now because I'm getting him on there instead. Uh, it starts on the ground at zero feet off the ground and to 10 feet. And I need to add on my next floor, which is going to be, I'm just going to call it first floor. And that's going to start at 10 foot in the air. Come on. To 20 foot in the air. All right. So now I can turn off the edit bit. No, I didn't want to do that. Turn off the edit bit. And I've got my ground floor now and I've got my first floor. So let's build the, um, let's bring in the first floor. Let's do that. So I'm going to keep that open. Let me make it a bit smaller again so it's not intrusive. Because with that open, it's going to let me actually do the floors bits rather than try and pile everything on top. Okay, first floor. I need to go to my tile browser. Here it comes. A little bit slow. Uh, and I need to find again I want to make sure I'm saving it in the right place and I need to select that I have already selected it so I can just drag that top floor in uh, and line it up over the top lovely jubbly and then because it's the smart thing to do I'm going to lock it so I can't keep accidentally moving it so now we've got the ground floor we've got the first floor ground floor first floor easy peasy now it took us a while and we've got a whole video on rippers levels and, and how to use this and how to do it so again, if you're going like, what? Well, hang on a minute, that's awesome. How did that happen? How did you do that? Uh, well, I've just done it really quite quickly, but there is a whole video showing you how to do that in a bit more detail if you want to go and watch that. You'll find it in the add-ons, and it's called Levels. Right, but most of you, you already know that because you've been around watching for a while. Let's build some walls. Um now, there's a couple of different ways to do it. I'm aware that there's there's quite a few new people have joined the channel. Um, I've got quite a few new subscribers. I don't know where you are in your journey. Some of you will be right at the very beginning. Uh, if you have questions on any of, like, why the hell are you doing that? Or how did you get that to work? Shout. Uh, drop it in the comments. Ask. Uh, if I don't know, almost guarantee somebody else in the comments will know because they're, you're a great bunch, aren't you? Um, they help me out a lot, okay, because I'm not an expert, never pretended I am. See see how wonky my walls are? Um, <laughs> but they will be, oh, no, I've done it again. <laughs> um, but they will be able to help you out. Now, I know somebody there watching me do walls is already really frustrated. And what they're going to be saying, rightly so, is I can, over on the left-hand side, click this plus and force snappiness to grid. Uh, which is brilliant because it stops me messing up. Okay, so look how awesome that is. That's just going to make sure that even an idiot like me can manage to stay colour within the lines. However, um, where I've got these windows that are offset from my grid, it does give me a slight problem. Um, I need to do that. Nobody asked you to do that. Uh, I do need to uh, do those bits manually. Now also, people are kind of going oh he's just drawing all over the windows yeah I am drawing over the windows like a naughty kid um, put the door in because there's an easy well, there's a couple of different ways you can do it of course there is because foundry there's multiple different ways you can achieve your results that you're after um, the only correct way is the way that works for you okay so if somebody says oh you should do it this way well no I think what they mean is you could do it this way not necessarily should your game you do it your way what works for you having said that there's lots of people with loads of experience and they might be suggesting to do it a particular way because they've tried the way that you've done it 
and they've encountered problems or something like that or, or it's more efficient because let's face it I really enjoy making the maps and stuff. I enjoy this process because I'm a weird uh, and I know I'm not alone. <laughs> I know there's a good number of you out there that, that agree with that and it's kind of like that's part of the fun. Um, but what we, uh, we don't want to waste time if we don't have to. So I've put all my walls in, including over the walls and doors, but what I can just do is uh, click each of my doors, hold down the shift key, select the rest of the doors, probably miss one because I always do. Uh, there it is and then with that done I can just double click and then I can change all of them at the same time to be doors and put on my appropriate door noises boom that's all the doors and then I can do the same with the windows yes I can use the windows drawing tool over here uh, but actually sometimes interrupting your flow to uh, to go and change to windows and stuff isn't necessarily um, quicker so what do I want? So I've got all my windows selected and because I've got all of them selected, they're all going to end up exactly the same. So are they going to restrict light? No, they're not. Are they going to restrict sight? I'm going to use proximity for that. So if you're too far from the window, you can't see through it. You have to be a bit closer to actually see through the window. For me, that makes sense. And you can see because of Ripper's wall height, it's already saying actually this is the ground floor. It only goes up 10 feet, these walls, which is perfect what we want we don't want walls interior walls extending right up and interfering with the upper levels where we don't want them to here we go we've done walls uh, now for this floor I want to do lights now again we're using Anabar's maps um, I like them they're just the kind of right amount of kind of grubbiness for me for this campaign um, and they've all got very similar light fittings which makes sense they stick with the theme um, throughout which is, is really good uh, and those are where I want to put my light sources. Now, rather than creating new ones, I'm just going to, I'm not going to cheat because I did the hard work the first time. But I can pop over, just go to the ground floor here and go to the lights. Because I want all these lights to be similar to these. So I'm just going to copy. You can see it says I've copied one ambient light object. If I can use my mouse correctly. Uh, and then I can just pop back over here. Come back to my ground floor. And I can come and pop. He did copy it. Oh, stupid boy, I'm not on lights. There we go. <laughs> Didn't have light select over the left-hand side. So I can copy that light in, double-click this. It's got the same radius, it's got the same brightness, it's got the same animation and everything else. The only thing, this has got a darkness activation range because in the pub, as I said, as it gets darker, the lights come on automatically. I don't want that for this, so I can just adjust that activation range. Job done. That's my new light. Um, so now I can just copy this one and then anywhere there's one of these I can just slap that out and then I can come back later and turn off all of the ones that I don't want on. There's one outside there. Uh, any more in here? No, I think I've got them for this floor. But what you will notice, of course, and I know a lot of you are aware of this, is this light is nowhere near the wall because you can see it snaps to the, it snaps to the grid. Uh, to be a bit more precise, I can hold shift and I can just nudge those in to be actually over the lamp because I don't want the source of my light, so the very centre of the light, to be kind of hanging in the middle of the room. I want it to be dead over the lamp uh, and I can just do that with shift. Um, and that's just a tip for pretty much anything you want to move. Is if you hold down shift, it gives you that extra level of precision. That one's all right. Might have already done it. There we go. Uh, and then, of course, once I've kind of come to the finish bit, I'll decide which lights are going to be on, which ones are going to be off. OK, um, because, again, just remember that these are supposed to be real people um, and they're not just going to burn fuel for the sake of it, for the PC's preference. They're only going to put the lamps on that they're actually using at the moment, um, which is what I did in build drafts. If you look here, well, when the shops open, We've got somebody in the storeroom and he's out front. We're not going to have all these lamps on. It makes no sense. So they're not. But we can turn them on. And I like having the lights ready. If the pay players go in there and say they want to light it or they go and sit down to have a nice cup of tea um, and the NPC is going to put the lights on, all I need to do is just like, yeah, toggle the lights. Easy peasy. Okay. So make sure my levels is open again. Ground floor is done. Let's pop to the first floor. Uh, it's going to be repeat that process. 
So how about we do the lights first, considering I've still got that on the clipboard. So one there, one there, there's one over here as well. So again, just going to use shift, just going to move that in a bit. Now what you will notice, of course, is these lights are shining in their full radius because I haven't put any walls in yet. So they're not, none of this light is being blocked by walls. Uh, that was walls, not wolves. Uh, look, there's a candle over there. There's a candlestick here as well. So just sort of in the middle here on this desk, there's a candlestick. There's a candlestick. So one of the things I like to do is I do like to have those available for the characters potentially to light as well. If they say, oh, I'm going to light the candlestick, it's a pain in the butt. You've got to go and create the light and stuff. Um, so already over here, again, we've got candlesticks on here and I've already created these lights. So like this, they're not on uh, unless the characters specifically uh, sit at a table and then the barkeep will light that for them. But they're not just going to have those burning away. So again, I know all our lights got mixed up there. Uh, I have to be on lights. Come on, you just did that foolishly yourself. Uh, again, just by holding shift, we can move that in to be a bit more precise. All right, anywhere else there was candlesticks around here. I mean, you asked me, that's a... I didn't want to copy. Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? slap that in there. So we got those lights on so even if all the other lights are off the player characters could choose to put on the candle. Let's turn that one off you can see it a bit easier. We'll put on the Bear with me. It's because I've got this darkness activation. I don't want that on for this. I don't want it on for that either. So now they should just come on when I click them to be on. I'm not. Why am I not seeing that? No. Oh, I didn't save it. You stupid boy. <laughs> ah, professional. No, I'm not professional. Never ever pretended to be professional of anything. To be honest. <laughs> uh, all right, there we go. Yeah. So we could just have the candles on if we want to. We can have the wall lamps on. Um, whatever is suitable for the time. Okay. Good. He's still with me. He's still watching this nonsense. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's build the walls up here. All right, so again, um, if we have it snap to grid, this is going to work. So hold control down. This is going to work a bit better up here for us, which is lovely. Because those windows are conveniently on grid rather than being uh, misaligned from the grid in this instance. Look at that. Beautiful. Um, I, see, I didn't want to do that, did I? I've accidentally covered the entire door. It was going so well. No, 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 no. There we go. It's going so well. It's I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> uh, and then we can. That's going to be a door, of course. We'll sort that out in a minute. So just like we did below, what we can do is we can select, hold down the shift, select all of these windows. Double click and now we can say yes, restrict movement, light, we're going to say none. We're going to say sight is going to be proximity, 10 foot works about for me. Um, lovely, you can see it's automatically only applying them at this level, which is good. That's our windows in. Uh, and now we can just do the same with the doors. So there's one door, hold down shift, select, uh, select. Uh, and up the top there's another door. So we've got our doors. Uh, again, double click. Now we've got them all selected and we can say mo restrict movement. Actually, what we need to do is go to door configuration. Say, yes, it's a door. They're all going to start off closed and I'm going to make them all creaky. That's it. Done. Okay, so we've got our ground floor with all of our lights, all of our doors, all of our windows. We've got our... Uh, first floor, with all of our lights, all of our windows, scene essentially built. 
So all we need to do once that's built is we go back to the module, or if you're using a module or, or whatever it is, your notes, uh, and it's what needs to be in here. So I'm looking at Mad Mary's townhouse just in the other window there, and it's talking about the moaning sob f um, floats through the still grey streets. So I'm going to need a sound effect of a moaning noise that when they approach, so when they approach the house, they're still going to hear her sobbing. Um, until they actually go and speak with her and of course I need to actually put a Mad Mary in so I can go to my NPCs here I can just duplicate one doesn't matter um, and I can call her Mad Mary she's going to be known as Mad Mary anyway throughout the town so I'm happy to do that she's an NPC if they decide to fight her, it's not going to be a combat, it's going to be a murder. So I don't need to worry about the stats and stuff. Uh, what I do need to do, of course, is at the moment I've got the wrong... I haven't got an image for Mad Mary, so I'm going to need to sort that out. Um, so the rest of the description is actually there's not a lot in the original module at all for this entire place. Uh, the house, which is about 40 foot square, boarded up and barricaded from the inside. Hmm. You read that description and that suggests that maybe our windows shouldn't be quite as they are and maybe those windows should not really be windows so let's make that change straight away because this is what happens when you don't you know when you're you don't read ahead and you focus on the building rather than the adventure shush <laughs> so actually what we might be saying is yeah they are going to uh restrict um, light and sight. So if we change those back to normal, they look like normal walls. Now, if, if they decide, uh, they being the players, if they decide to prise some of the boards off and things, well, that's okay. You can just come to your wall thing um, and then you can just change that to a window and go, oh, yeah, and you can do that. Um, you can just do it on the fly. Yeah, we don't have to have everything perfect. We can make amendments on the fly. Um, just try and prepare for the obvious things if you can because it will save you time later all right uh, mad mary sits in the center of the floor in an upstairs bedroom so she's not even, so she's not even going to be down here let's go upstairs boom there we go she's going to be sitting in the floor bosh about about there yeah somewhere in the middle there uh, we can stick her on that rug it talks about the fact that she's clutching a malformed doll uh, she's lost in her sorrow and despondency. She barely recognises the presence of anyone in the room. She says nothing in the presence of anger, but she will talk, albeit haltingly, to someone who talks to her gently. Because she's a very broken individual. Uh, she hid her beloved daughter in the house of the girls uh, for the girl's entire life, but now she's a teenager. She's broken out of the house a week ago, not been seen since. Well, that's not surprising, is it? She's desperate to get away from her mother, who's completely insane, because the world actually is that scary. <laughs> I mean, if there's ever an excuse for being a massively overprotective parent, a uh, parent living here would be it. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the whole encounter. So all I need to do to finish this is the find an appropriate sound effect of um, somebody sobbing and crying, a female, of course, and get myself a image, which I'm probably going to use uh, the Discord um, the Discord bot um, mid-journey to create me an image. That's what I use for some of these other ones. Swap it over, stick some volume on. That's going to be it. Okay, so that's that scene done. Built from scratch, multi-level, all the walls, everything else, and talking to you lot. It really doesn't take that long once you get into the swing of it, even if you're a Muppet like me and make silly mistakes. <sighs> well, I hope that was enjoyable for the ones of you who stayed along to the end. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but that's cool. That's fine. Whatever. Um, I'll see you in the next one. You take care.